Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion on continuous system and uh, we are in 11th week and this is our lecture 2. So, before we move into the details, uh, let us quickly uh, review what we did in the last class. So, if we have a beam which is modeled as a simply supported beam and then we define x and y axis and the beam is loaded by an arbitrary function f x comma t. Now, for this beam again E i is given at the same time length of the beam is also given. Now, for this uh, problem the free vibration equation that we have derived and the equation is E i fourth derivative of y with respect to x plus m bar that is mass per unit length this will give us the inertial effect. So, second derivative of y with respect to t. So, this is equal to 0 and in this problem it is a PDE. So, what we proposed is y of x comma t is equal to phi n of x z n of t and then we sum over all n. So, n is the number of mode. Obviously, n ranges from 1 to infinity. So, we have the possibility of infinite number of modes and then what we did we derived uh, the expression for phi n x from the boundary conditions right and for simply supported beam if you recall the expression for phi n x is uh, sin n phi x by L right. And we also applied initial conditions to solve this z n of t right and then once we solve z n of t that is the modal solution then we can find out the response of the beam which is y x of t. So, we can easily find out y x of t. We also derived the expression for natural frequency omega n square or say omega n is equal to a n L whole square then square root of E i divided by m bar by L to the power 4. Now, in this derivation our assumption uh, was E i is given that means, uh, i of x is equal to i that is constant also m bar of x is equal to m bar which is also constant. So, per unit length the mass is constant and the moment of inertia of the cross section throughout the length is also constant. Now, they can also vary there is no uh, restriction that they have to be constant. If they vary obviously, their impact we will have to consider and accordingly we have to modify the equation. That we can do that is not a difficult problem, but for the time being what we have is uh, the solution then y um, x comma t will be equal to summation n equal to 1 to infinite and then sin n pi x by L and within bracket a n cos omega n t plus b n sin omega n 
and the expression for an and bn also we derived and that is 2 by l 0 to capital L rho x sin n pi x by l dx and then b n is equal to 2 by omega n l 0 to l and then uh, sin n pi x by l dx. What are these uh, two functions? They are basically the initial conditions. So, initial conditions if you recall initial conditions they are actually y of x comma 0 is equal to rho of x and then y dot of x comma 0 is equal to the given function. So, these two are given. Today, we will solve some problem, we will use this expression, but uh, up to this point the derivation is straightforward and we have already gone through each and every step. Today, what we are going to do first is if we change the boundary condition, then how can we derive uh, similar expression that we will do. So, our first task is let me just make some space here. So, what we will do today is derive the expression for free boundary condition. In fact, there can be other possibilities, but uh, the derivation is pretty similar. So, let us go for this condition. Now, if we have free free boundary condition, then obviously, we have this is the beam and then we have coordinate system. So, this is our f x comma t. Obviously, for the time being we are not solving forced response. So, we do not need uh, this forcing function for the time being. So, we will again derive the expression for free boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions in this case is uh, at x equal to 0 we have moment 0 comma t is equal to 0 and then shear force at 0 comma t is equal to 0. Now, the first condition gives us phi double dot of 0 is equal to 0. This I explained in the last class, it is very simple and the shear force will give us third derivative of phi at 0 is also 0. Now, at x equal to L, we again have both moment and shear force, they are uh, 0. So, m L comma t, this is equal to 0. So, which gives us second derivative of phi with respect to x at L is equal to 0 and then similarly, shear force at L for all t is equal to 0. So, that will give us third derivative at x equal to L is also 0. Now, if you recall, from our previous lecture, so what was phi of x? It was a sin a x plus b cos a x plus c sin hyperbolic a x plus d cos hyperbolic a x. Obviously, the moment we get this expression, we have four constants to evaluate a, b, c, d and that we did for the simply supported case and then we derived this expression for uh, phi n x. Now, here in this case what we have to do, we have to differentiate this expression twice 
to satisfy the first condition and then thrice for the second condition at both x equal to 0 and x equal to L. So, if we differentiate this expression of phi of x, then what we have a square then minus a sin x minus b cos x plus c sin hyperbolic a x plus d cos hyperbolic a x. And then similarly, we can differentiate one more time with respect to x and then what we will get phi differentiated thrice with respect to x, we will have a cube then minus a cos a x minus actually it will be plus because we have cos a x. So, b sin a x then plus c cos hyperbolic a x plus d sin hyperbolic a x. Let me erase this expression. So, what we do? We satisfy the first condition at x equal to 0. So, we have phi differentiated twice with respect to x at x equal to 0, this is equal to 0 and that gives us a square within bracket minus b plus d is equal to 0. Similarly, if we differentiate phi thrice and put x equal to 0, then what we get is a cube within bracket minus a plus c is equal to 0. So, from the first expression what we get b is equal to d and the second expression gives us a equal to c. Fine. So, then what we can do? We can further simplify the expression for phi of x. So, if we do that, uh, what we have is uh, phi of x in place of c, let us put a. So, what we have is sin a x plus sin hyperbolic a x multiplied by a plus cos a x plus cos hyperbolic a x multiplied by b. Now, similarly, we can also modify second and third derivative. So, if you do that, the first expression will be a square, then in place of c, we will put a and then uh, what we have is minus sin a x plus sin hyperbolic a x times a plus minus cos a x plus cos hyperbolic a x times b. And then finally, the third derivative with respect to x, we can again simplify. So, it will be a cube then minus cos a x plus cos hyperbolic a x times a plus sin a x plus sin hyperbolic a x times b. So, now what we can expect is 
that we will satisfy the boundary condition at x equal to L. And for that we have at x equal to L, if we satisfy the boundary condition, so we will have sin hyperbolic A L minus sin A L times A plus cos hyperbolic A L minus cos A L times B equal to 0. So, that comes from uh, the first expression that is when we differentiate phi twice with respect to x and put x equal to L. Then if we consider the second condition at x equal to L, we have cos hyperbolic A L minus cos A L times A plus sin hyperbolic A L plus sin A L times B equal to 0. So, this is say equation 1 A and equation 1 B. Now, what we can conclude is that A equal to B equal to 0 is not the solution we are looking for because this is a trivial solution. For non-trivial solution, what we have is determinant of sin hyperbolic A L minus sin A L then cos hyperbolic A L minus cos A L then cos hyperbolic A L minus cos A L sin hyperbolic A L plus sin A L is equal to 0. So, that is equation number 2. Now, once we simplify this, we get uh, expression cos A L into cos hyperbolic A L minus 1 is equal to 0. So, that is the, so that is the equation number 3 and once we solve this, solve this equation to get A L. Now, if you look at these two equations, equation 1 A and equation 1 B, so what we can do, we can actually express A as cos A L minus cos hyperbolic A L divided by sin A L minus sin hyperbolic A L times B. So, look at this expression on the right hand side we find out this A L. So, we can express A in terms of B and thereby we can actually express phi of x in a very compact form. So, cos hyperbolic a n x minus cos a n x minus sigma n, I will define sigma n in a minute times sin hyperbolic a n x minus sin a n x. So, what is the sigma n? It is this expression cos a n l minus cos hyperbolic a n l divided by sin a n l minus sin hyperbolic a n l. So, it is very simple for every mode we can find out the expression for a n l that we will get from this equation 3. So, that we solve for every mode as we keep on changing n equal to 0, 1, 2 up to infinite. And then once we find out 
a n l for every mode, then we can find out what is sigma n. That is the constant and it is possible simply because we can express a and b through this relation and then phi n x through this relation. So, this equation say equation 4. So, for every mode we find out what is this equation 4 and then once we do that we can find out the solution recall y of x comma t is nothing but summation over n phi n x z n t. We have to solve the time component then because we already have phi n x from this equation 4. So, we can now solve the response. Now, this is for free free boundary condition. So, for free free boundary condition omega n is what? Omega n is equal to a n l whole square square root of e i divided by m bar l to the power 4. This is actually n. So, as we keep on changing boundary condition what changes? A n l l is constant. So, actually a n changes, but uh, if we consider them together. So, this changes for every boundary condition as we keep on changing l. So, we find out this for n equal to 0, 1, 2 up to infinite. And then uh, once we find out a n l from the characteristic equation, then we put it back in this uh, expression for natural frequency and then we find out the natural frequency. We also know now phi n x for different boundary condition. So, you have already derived that for simply supported case and then for free free boundary condition. Now, for free free boundary condition, if I just uh, write down the expression for omega n in first 4 mode. So, we have free free boundary conditions. So, n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and then a n l whole square. This is equal to you will get I am writing the values. So, you can derive this from the characteristic equation. then sigma n will be 0 0.9825, then 1.0008, then 0 0.9999 and then 1.0000. Now, if I draw the mode shape obviously the first mode shape will look like note the free ends and the slope there it will satisfy the condition that moment and shear force at the free end is 0. So, this is 0 0.224 L and this is 0. 776L. Then in the second mode, the mode shape is so this will be 0 0.132L. So this is 0 0.5L, 0. 86. Then in the third mode, it will be a 
and the zero crossing points are point zero nine four L. This is zero point three five six L. Then zero point six four four L, and then zero point nine zero six L. And the fourth mode. will be so this is 0 0.073 L 0 0.277 L 0 0.5 L then 0 0.723L and then 0 0.927L. So, that is the four different modes when we apply a free free boundary condition. Similarly, you can derive the expression for um, both end fixed then one end fixed and the other end free. So, this is the cantilever bounded condition and then one end fixed and other end simply supported. So, these are the conditions again for that uh, I just leave this as a home task. You can refer any textbook you will get the standard expressions uh, in any textbook it is pretty similar again you have to identify the boundary condition in each and every case then you have to start with the expression of phi which has four different constants and that four constants you have to evaluate uh, by satisfying the boundary conditions and then you will get a characteristic equation. Uh, from the characteristic equation you will get a n l and then uh, you can derive as many modes as you want. So, that actually covers the free vibration um, for continuous system. The advantage in these cases uh, for example, if you have free free boundary condition you have these expressions derived. So, what you have to do uh, when you write a code uh, you just use these values these are standard expressions these values to derive the complete response quantity that we will do also in a minute using MATLAB. But before that uh, we will do two more uh, exercise first we will prove the orthogonality relation and then we will discuss force boundary condition sorry forced vibration and then we will take up some example in MATLAB. But before I uh, go to the next topic I again remind you we have derived the expression for uh, simply supported and free free boundary conditions. There are other boundary conditions uh, you just take it as a home task and then identify the boundary conditions and then uh, derive the expression for A and L uh, then you can easily uh, find out the mode shapes. That task you complete and again uh, these are standard results you will get these results in any textbook uh, that you uh, refer to. Okay, so, our next topic is ortho gonna ratio. Now, recall uh, discrete system we derived orthogonality of mode shapes with respect to the mass and stiffness matrices. The question comes whether uh, that orthogonality is valid here in this uh, continuous system or not. Uh, obviously, uh, we can intuitively say yes. The reason is here also we start with a generalized coordinate and then we expand that in terms of modal response. The moment we go to modal response obviously, uh, we expect that orthogonality will be satisfied. How let us see that? So, let us consider two modes say phi m x 
and phi n x. So, these are the two different modes that is m not equal to n. Now, just imagine in the mth mode, we consider the beam and without loss of generality, we can consider say simply supported beam and say this first mode be like this. It can be any shape just for discussion, let us consider this is the shape. Okay. So, this is uh, our phi m of x and corresponding inertial force also we can draw and it will have similar shape. So, this is say f inertial corresponding to mth mode and this you can write down the expression. So, this is nothing but mth mode. So, omega m square m bar of x phi of m x. So, that is the expression for inertial force. Then we can also draw the other mode shape So, in this case, let the mode shape be like this. So, this is phi n of x and then uh, we can draw the inertial force, it will have the same shape, but in this case, this is f i n of x, right. And the expression will be omega n square m bar x phi n of x. So, before I move further, let me again remind you that these are arbitrary mode shapes and it can take any other shape. So, long this m and n are distinct and different, then we can take that and the derivation is true for any arbitrary two mode shapes. Okay. So, now uh, what we do, we apply um, Betis theorem. What it says that if you consider the mth mode shape and nth inertial force and find out the work done, that will be same as when you consider mth inertial force and nth mode shape. So, uh, as per this work done by f i n acting on phi m x is equal to the work done by f i m acting on phi n x. So, if that is the case what we have 0 to L 
then phi or f i n of x phi m of x d x is equal to 0 to L f i m of x phi n of x d x. Now, this inertial force we know the expression. So, what we can do? We can put the expression for inertial force which is here. So, 0 to L f i n x. So, it will be omega n square m bar x phi n of x times phi m of x d x is equal to 0 to L f i m x. So, in place of that we can write omega m square m bar x phi m x times phi n x d x. And then if we take them in left hand side. So, what we have omega n square minus omega m square times 0 to L phi m x m bar x phi n x d x is equal to 0. Now, we started with the assumption that m not equal to n. So, that means omega m not equal to omega n. So, in that case omega n square minus omega m square cannot be equal to 0. So, we have the only possibility is 0 to L phi m x m bar x phi n x d x is equal to 0. So, that is the orthogonality condition for m not equal to m. So, what we can see from this discussion is that uh, the orthogonality relation still holds in case of continuous system where we express the total response y x comma t as the summation of modal response. So, n ranging from 1 to infinite phi n of x z n of t. So, these mode shapes they are orthogonal to each other, but here also again you note that it is with respect to this uh, m bar x that is the distribution of mass over the length of the beam. Obviously, if we consider m bar x to be constant then it comes out of this integration that is a special case, but otherwise when we have a distributed mass then the mode shapes we have they are orthogonal with respect to the distributed mass. As we noticed in case of discrete system the mode shapes were orthogonal with respect to mass matrix and because uh, mass is uh, uh, related to stiffness through natural frequency we could modify this expression uh, and then we could prove that uh, the mode shapes were also orthogonal with respect to uh, stiffness matrix. Here also the similar uh, results we get for two different modes. So, that proves the orthogonality of two different modes using Betis theorem. Now, we have the last topic is forced vibration. So, in case of forced vibration what we have? We have some f x comma t which is given 
and then equation of motion is uh, E i fourth derivative of y with respect to x is equal to f x comma t minus m bar second derivative of y with respect to t. So, again this is a PD. what we will have? We will have the transient component and steady state component and that we get y x comma t is equal to the product of phi n x z n t for all n. Now, what you recall is that E i phi n fourth derivative of x is equal to what? m bar omega n square phi n x, right. So, what we can do is uh, we can put this expression back in this uh, equation. So, this equation is say Roman 1 and so this equation is Roman 2. So, if we put this expression back, what we get uh, from equation 1 is E i then summation n phi n fourth derivative with respect to x times z n t is equal to f x comma t minus m bar then again summation over all n phi n x z n double dot of t. So, that is the third equation. Now, uh, what we can do in place of this uh, e i fourth derivative of phi n x, we can replace uh, this expression in equation 2. So, what we have is summation over all n m bar omega n square then phi n x z n t is equal to f of x comma t minus m bar summation over all n phi n x z n double dot of t. So, that is the fourth equation. Now, at this level you can sense what we are going to do. Uh, we uh, are going to multiply this expression by phi n and then integrate over the whole length. So, what we will do multiply both sides by phi n x and integrate over 0 to L. So, if we do that, uh, what we have is omega n square, then z n of t 0 to L, then m bar of x phi n square of x dx is equal to 0 to L f x comma t times phi n x dx 
minus we have um, z n double dot of t then 0 to l m bar phi n square x dx. So, that is the fifth equation. Now, we can see this equation uh, is the expression in modal coordinates. So, we can actually solve this. So, if I simplify this expression, what we have m n times z n double dot of t plus we have um, omega n square times m n z n of t is equal to we have f n. So, that is the sixth equation and this is actually the modal equation in compact form that we are going to solve. So, what is the expression of m n? That is the modal mass, it is 0 to l m bar of x phi n square x dx. So, that is the modal mass. Once we find out modal mass, we can actually solve this expression. In fact, we can uh, modify this equation by normalizing with respect to mass. So, we will have z n double dot of t plus omega n square times z n of t is equal to f n by m n. That is say seventh equation. So, this is the equation again we know the solution we have already derived in case of s dub system what will be the solution in this case. So, if I uh, add uh, damping then what we will have in z n double dot of t plus twice eta n omega n z n dot of t plus omega n square z n of t is equal to f n divided by m n. So, that is the eighth equation. So, this is the complete expression for the force vibration case in the modal coordinate, where we consider the damping force. Now, eta n is the critical damping ratio. And we already know the expression for m n is equal to 0 to l m bar of x phi n square x dx and f n x is equal to 0 to l f x comma t phi n x dx. So, that is the complete set of equation. So, what we can do for every boundary condition, we can find out what is phi n of x. So, this expression we can obtain. The moment we do that, we can find out what is m n and what is f n. That means, modal mass and modal force. The moment we do that, we can find out what is z n of t because the solution for z n of t from this equation it is uh, already discussed in detail. So, we can write down the expression for this uh, z n of t. If you recall what is that? It is 
exponential minus eta n omega n t then we have a n cos omega d n t plus b n sin omega d n t plus we have particular integral. Particular integral will depend on the nature of this uh, forcing function, whether it is constant, whether it is sinusoidal, whether it is uh, any arbitrary force, accordingly we have to evaluate the particular integral. And again, we have to find out this a n and b n from the initial conditions that we have. So, that completes the derivation of the solution. Then what we do now, we take an example. So, the example says we have a simply supported beam and then it has a forcing function which is p naught sin lambda t. So, E is given it is 200 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square i that is moment of inertia is 0 0.0091 meter to the power 4 m bar is equal to 84 kg per meter l is equal to 7.5 meter that is length of the beam then p naught is equal to 22 .5 Newton per meter and then lambda is equal to 300 radian per second. So, that is the problem we are going to solve using MATLAB. So, let us uh, solve it. So, what we do? We write the main file. So, let us define the values E is equal to 200 E 9, then I is equal to 0 0.0091, then M is equal to 84, L is equal to 7.5 meter then P 0 is equal to 22.5 and then lambda is equal to 300 radian per second. So, that is the problem statement and then uh, we are going to solve it. So, what we do is uh, let us first find out the natural frequency. Remember, this is a simply supported beam. So, for simply supported beam, um, let me first write down the expression for natural frequency and then uh, we will do that. So, omega n equal to what? This is a n l whole square, square root of E i by m bar l to the power 4. So, that is the expression for natural frequency and then uh, <coughs> what we did in this case is uh, the characteristic equation phi n of x we obtain as sin n pi x by l 
and then uh, a n l whole square these values um, we also obtained. So, that is pi square then 4 pi square then 9 pi square then 16 pi square. So, this is for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 and then n equal to 4. Let us go up to fourth mode. Uh, you can easily uh, increase the number of modes. So, the natural frequencies, so w n is equal to n. So, n is equal to let us define n is equal to 1 say first mode. So, what we have here is uh, n square pi square then times square root of E i divided by m i to the power 4. So, So, what we get is uh, this will be L to the power 4. So, we have this is the first frequency. So, if we change to second, so we can find out the second frequency. Similarly, third frequency and then fourth frequency. So, we can find out. Let me just slightly increase because otherwise this uh, uh, omega n they are very high. So, if we increase this, so we can reduce it um, further. So, if we increase it more obviously, um, the natural frequency will reduce. Okay. fine. So, now we have the natural frequency. What we have to find out is uh, the response in um, time domain. So, for that uh, we have to calculate the modal mass and the modal uh, forcing function. So, modal mass uh, we know the expression you can see here integration of 0 to L um, m bar x phi n uh, square of x dx. So, let us just um, write a function file. So, what we have is um, modal mass m n and modal force f n that we will calculate. modal property is the name of this function file. So, what we have to give them is mode number n then uh, capital L also we have to give them and then uh, m. Now, if we do that what we get is uh, phi n x and the expression for phi n x is n pi x by L. So, what we do? We define um, x by L. So, let us call it x by L. 
So, it is 0 then 0 0.01 and it will go up to 1 because it is x by L when x is equal to L the ratio will be uh, 1. So, we have sin then uh, n pi x b l right. So, that is the mode shape and then we have to find out m n m n uh, for that again we use numerical integration scheme. So, it will range from 0 to L we can also define x here instead of x by L. So, it will be say 0 to uh, L. So, in that case here what we have to do we have to divide it by L. Okay. Now, we have already defined x. So, x and then uh, we have to define the function uh, that we are going to integrate. So, it is m star phi n x square of that. So, that is our m n. Now, what is f n? If you recall the expression for f n is uh, you can see here on your screen. So, it is f x comma t phi n x. In our case we again have trap z x comma we have a constant forcing function if not so that let us pass it here so it is p not so p not dot star phi n x So, you can save this, uh, we call it modal properties. We have to write function here and then return. So, now if we call this function what we get is uh, m n that is modal mass and then uh, amplitude of modal force. Now, uh, what we get is modal mass and amplitude of modal force. So, what is the solution? Um, our equation in this case is, uh, so if I consider say undamped case, so it will have z n double dot of t plus omega n square z n of t is equal to we have f n by m n. So, this expression will be um, z 
if n is uh, zero to l f x comma t, then phi n x d x, right. So, um, z n of t we can write down in um, close form. So, if we have uh, 0 0 initial condition, then the solution of this equation will be uh, if you recall z n static times 1 minus cos omega n t for 0 0 initial condition. Now, what is z n static that we can easily find out it is actually f n amplitude of that f n divided by we have uh, omega n square m bar l right. So, that we can uh, easily find it out and then um, let us complete the solution. So, uh, the solution is uh, z n of t is equal to uh, if you carry out this task that we have done uh, numerically, if you do it in closed form, so it will be 2 p naught sin n pi x by L divided by omega n square m bar L and then times 1 minus cos omega m t. So, that is the expression we have. So, what we can do now is uh, we can obtain this uh, if amplitude is equal to f n divided by m n right. So, that is the amplitude of the force and then uh, we can uh, find out the solution in closed form or we can also uh, find out the solution using uh, any other for example, say um, Duhamel integral. So, this is what we did earlier. So, we can also uh, use this expression uh, to find out the solution. So, what we know uh, from this equation is uh, that is the equation. Now, let me make it general. So, let us consider say eta n say 5 percent modal damping ratio we consider and then uh, lambda also we have to define. So, oh, we have already defined lambda. So, now what we do? Let us find out the modal solution using Duhamel integral right. So, our mass is 1 k is omega n square eta n we have already defined. So, you have to define t now t is equal to so that is the time and f of t we have to define. So, f of t we call it t n 
that is the modal uh, forcing function. So, we have if amplitude starts sin, we have lambda dot star d. So, this is our d n. Now, if I plot this, let us call it z n t, because that is the notation we use. So, what we have here figure and plot t comma z n t and then let us define x level. and y level. So, this is z n t. So, let us run this code and you can see the modal response for this particular case we have obtained. So, let us reduce the um, time and we have this modal response. So, that is in the first mode. Now, if we change uh, second mode, so we can find out the response in the second mode. Similarly, third mode and then fourth mode. Okay. So, let us consider for the timing first four modes. And then finally, what we have to do? We have to, um, I mean, combine all of them. So that also we can do. Um, for that, uh, we have to define four um, cases. We can define another function. So, here you will get y of t and then this is equal to. So, total solution. So, what we give is number of modes and then uh, have to give all these properties. So, L E I M P naught and then lambda. Now, uh, here what we will do? We will uh, write a for loop Now, within this for loop, we have to evaluate the modal solution that we have already done here. So, let us copy this um, part. Here, for every mode, we calculate these properties. Then we calculate mass normalized modal amplitude. We can define this function in the main file. So, the time function we define here and then we include time here also. Then we calculate the forcing function here and once we do that, we can calculate the modal solution.
So, now we have modal solution. So, phi n we have to define. So, for that again let us copy this part. So, this is phi n x Now, actually we have to evaluate at a given x. So, let us call it x value. So, x v, x v will be given here. So, we initiate the total solution for that find out the number of time point and then y uh, is equal to or let me define y of t is equal to 1 comma n t. So, this is y of t. Now, y of t is equal to y of t plus we have phi n x star z n t. Then for every mode it will find out this response and then finally, we will get y of t. So, let us save this. So, the name is total solution and then we will call this function from the main file. And then instead of z and t, let us plot here y of t. So, this is y of t. So, oh, we did not define x v, x v is equal to L by 2. So, that is the position where we find out the response of the beam. Now, we also have to define eta. So, let me check. So, total solution here we did not define eta. So, let us do that eta n. So, after m we give eta n. and then let us run it. So, what we now get is basically the solution where we consider first four modes to find out the total solution. So, you can see how we can write the code and we consider different um, um, number of modes. So, if we reduce say three modes, then uh, we have a different solution. So, that way we can change the number of modes and then accordingly we can find out the solution. So, this example clearly shows you how for a continuous system if we have um, the properties defined we can develop the MATLAB code and this is this response is at x equal to L by 3. Similarly, we can change the position and then uh, we can find out the uh, response of the beam. The only issue is uh, if we change the boundary condition, then uh, again the phi n x that we use uh, here. So, at this uh, line you can see line number 11 and also in this uh, case line number 5. 
So, this expression will keep on changing for different boundary conditions. Nevertheless, uh, you can easily adapt this uh, within this framework and uh, you can see we use Duhamel integral again that we developed long back to find out the solution. So, we can have any arbitrary forcing function acting over the continuous beam and then uh, for that we can uh, develop this slightly modify this code and then uh, find out the total solution. So, I hope now this problem is clear to you, but uh, before I close let me just uh, uh, remind you one thing that this continuous uh, uh, systems uh, in many cases where we have beam or similar problem, um, it is very easy to solve because um, this phi n x you solve it for different boundary conditions and save it, then just use that value you do not have to. Uh, find out the solution every time and uh, you can easily find out the response at different location of the beam in this continuous uh, system formulation. So, you try this if you have any uh, difficulty do let us know uh, through email or in the open session uh, we will try to address your drought. So, with that let us close uh, this uh, discussion on continuous system. In the next module, we will go to finite element solution for uh, this vibration problems. We will also learn uh, a commercially available software, we will use ANSYS uh, and we will solve different problems, how to model structure in ANSYS and then do model analysis, then time history analysis, uh, response spectrum analysis, all that we will discuss in the next module. So, with that let us close here. Thank you very much. Thank you.